Greetings, the Astro 30 here, yet again with another electronics fundamentals video for you. Now, in this video I'm going to show you the correct way using a diode test function on a multimeter, how to test transistors. In this case these are called BJT or bipolar junction transistors. Um, MOSFETs are a, a, a different ball game when testing it. However, I will state with MOSFETs, you're really only looking for shorts between the gate, the drone, and the gate, and the source, and the source, and the drone. Uh, usually MOSFETs short across either two of those connections or all three, so it's pretty easy to determine a bad MOSFET. However, with a BJT, it's a little bit different determining whether or not the transistor is fine. So let's look at an equivalent schematic symbol for a BJT. So here on my whiteboard is a badly drawn schematic symbol, but we've got, in this case, an MPN. Now we've got a base, a collector, and emitter, and we see an arrow pointing out of the emitter on the MPN. That means we have a negative here, a negative here, and a positive here. So it's a positive base, negative collector, negative emitter. Now that gives you a clue of which lead to connect to what. So in this case, your positive lead of your multimeter would go on the base, and the negative would go on the collector for one part, and then you would then test from the base to emitter junction, positive base, negative emitter. The PMP counterpart is similar, except the polarity is reversed. We have a positive collector, a positive emitter, and a negative base. So to test the transistor, the negative probe goes on the base, positive on the collector. Conversely, to test the base emitter junction, negative on the base, positive on the emitter. Now, we also need to keep in mind that we also want to check between the collector and emitter junctions because it can be shorted between the collector and emitter, and you wouldn't know it unless you checked it, but from the base's perspective, between base and collector, base and emitter, well, we wouldn't see that short. Why? Because a transistor can actually be considered two diodes joined together. Let me demonstrate. So this is an equivalent representation of an MPN transistor. Uh, the PMP is similar, it's just the diodes are reversed. Obviously, trying to make a transistor out of two diodes will not work. I've already proved that in a previous video. But we can symbolize the transistor as two diodes joined at a common point to form the base for a bipolar junction transistor. So we've got one diode here with the cathode being the collector, anode being the base, another one here with the cathode being the emitter and the uh, anode being the base. So it'll end up being a common anode base. Now, we may see a dead short between these two junctions. And that could be because that something internal to the transistor has actually welded itself together because it went past the safe operating area curve of that transistor, it was over voltage, too much current was flowing through it, inadequate heat sinking, stuff like that, and something's just melted and welded itself together between the collector and emitter. And on a lot of the power transistors, the collector and the emitter pins are uh, next to each other, so it would stand a reason how that would happen. On the signal transistors, well, they're not usually, it depends on the transistor. However, we may see a short here, but from this perspective, we still have a working diode junction, and the same here. Unless, of course, and it does happen, we can end up with a short across here, and a short across here, as well as a short across there, so all three pins are shorted together. That is also a possibility. But sometimes we only ever see a short across between collector and emitter, and the base collector and base emitter junctions appear to work fine. That's because they still act like a diode, and if they're not shorted, 
well you're not going to see the short here so that's another thing to keep in mind when testing transistors that they can short collector emitter but they do not appear to be short a base to collector or a base to emitter okay with the theoretical information out of the way i've got two power transistors here and these came out of an amplifier that has a shorted output stage so these are good candidates for this video now this is a ta3pl the l stands for large package the ta3p itself is slightly shorter about 15 mil uh, but if the numbers on the uh, transistor are the same between the two packages they're the same transistor the characteristics are the same it's just the size is different and this is a TO220 uh, flat pack transistor uh, which is pretty standard this one's just a fully insulated one a lot of them just have a metal tab here to mount to a heat sink this is all encased in well, I believe this is plastic so the way the uh, pinouts on these go is on the TA3P and the TA3PL. Uh, the base is the left pin, uh, the collector is the center pin, and the emitter is the uh, outer pin. The same is also true for this transistor. The base is on the left, collector's in the middle, emitter's on the right. So, how do we test it? Well, first we get our multimeter set to diode mode which is there and I will take my TA3P transistor this one's actually a PMP so that has a negative base I've turned the beeper on the meter off because it is annoying but it's handy to have it on to test for shorts but it will beep when you get a normal diode junction so negative on the base positive on the collector and if we look at the meter we can see we've got a 0.461 of a volt there across base and collector which is uh, average it should be around about 0.5 to 0.6 but it depends on the transistor so if I now move my positive lead to the emitter we can see that we've got 0.4614 so all well and good now let's reverse the multimeter probes around and we will measure the transistor again in the reverse direction so this time positive on the base and ne uh, negative on the collector as we can see we've got a much higher voltage there that's indicating that well that junction is good it's not shorted let's now move to the emitter and as we can see pretty much the same all right now remember how I said we should test between collector and emitter doesn't matter in this case which way around the probes are. Boom. Dead short. That transistor is no good. So let's check this TO220 transistor. Um, this is also a PMP, so it has a negative base. So I'll start by putting that on the base. Collector. As we can see, that's almost completely dead short. Now if I go across to the emitter. Well, the junction looks all right. However, the base to collector does not. So let's reverse the probes around like we did in the last one. Base to collector, almost a dead short. Now from base to emitter, appears to be all right. However, the transistor is no good. And visually, it actually has a hole in it. So, that transistor is done just like its other one that I tested there before. Now let's look at a good working transistor. Okay, and this is a known working transistor. Well, at least it was to start with. I don't know if it is now. But uh, this is a TIP35C. This is an MPN. And it's in the standard TO3P package. And that's what they look like. Now, it's still base collector emitter, it's just in this case we put the positive lead on the base and the negative on the collector and emitter respectively. So let's start testing this one, positive on the base, on the collector, that's a good junction, move over to the emitter, that is also a good junction, reverse the polarity of the leads around, so now we have the negative on the base, 
positive on the collector, completely open. On the emitter, also completely open. Now for good measure, collector to emitter, and again, also completely open. And just for, you know, shits and giggles, we'll reverse the probes around again and check collector emitter. And finally, completely open. That is a good working transistor. Also, how do you determine where the base collector and emitter are? Well, if you know the packages, it's pretty easy to figure it out. But you can always just look up the part number that's printed on the um, device and look up its data sheet and it will give you the pinouts. Also be aware that when measuring transistors in circuit you may get weird wonderful measurements and assume that the transistor is bad. That's only because of in circuit components that are affecting the reading. It's better to take the transistor out of circuit and test it again just to verify that it is actually bad or good, whichever the case may be. Well, I'm going to leave this video here and I hope someone found this useful and enjoyable. If you did, please remember to go down below, like, comment and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And this is the Astro 3 saying, see ya, thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next video.